just manoeuvre myself over here. Well, good afternoon. Um, I know we're coming to the end of the day, so I'll try, try also to beat the, beat the bomb, so to speak, the, the, the bell, and um, uh, give you an overview of SBS Radio. And it's really fantastic to be here today um, and sharing what is obviously quite an interesting but very important day um, and a coming together of, of opinions and, and discussion, which is very key. Uh, Peter Khalil, my colleague, was here earlier, um, and I'd like to, I guess, pick up from where he left off. He gave you an overview of SBS, and what I want to do is give you a bit of a, a deeper dive into SBS radio. Um, and I guess from, from Claire's theme, um, it is all very much about stories. And what I want to do is talk to you about the SBS radio story, because about three years ago, we very much felt that we were at a crossroads. Um, and whilst we'd been around for nearly 38 years, which is a long time, we really needed to take some time out and have a, a think about the strategy for moving forward uh, in order to keep us relevant for the next 38 years and beyond. And I think um, similar to many of the other uh, discussions here today, some of the key things have been around getting the content right, facing the demographics, uh, and also looking at the convergence of technology. So um, as SBS does, we tell stories. So this is the SBS radio story. And what I want to do is talk about the humble beginnings to today, uh, why we exist in the first place, the imperative to change, the view now that very much, obviously, change is now the only constant in what we do, and absolutely, the future is looking bright. Um, so what we want to talk to you about is the new dimensions. And out of all the challenges, absolutely, there is a really bright future ahead for all of us. So from humble beginnings... Oh, it's come up quite differently. From humble beginnings back in 1975, um, SBS radio was the analogue AM and FM. And we had a small number of languages um, that we were broadcasting in in Sydney and Melbourne. Today, we're what we call audio and language content. We even changed our names about three years ago to reflect the fact that we're more than radio these days. Um, and because of the convergence of technology, um, we are on many other platforms as audio. So there are over 60 languages, soon to be 74, as Peter touched on earlier. Uh, we have AM, FM, national radio networks, digital radio, online, Mobile apps, so if you haven't got it, hopefully you'll download the SBS Your Language app after this session. Um, but also TV, so as 93% of Australians have now switched across to digital television, we've made sure that all our audio services are also on digital television, which is really critical to actually expand our footprint um, right across Australia. And as we know, by the end of this year, um, the analogue uh, spectrum will be switched off and 100% of Australia will be on digital radio. So we've seen that as quite a key part of our strategy for, for getting all the services of SBS radio to Australians everywhere. And in addition, a key part of what we do in SBS radio is to be out and about at events. And so we attend about 60 a year. Um, and we see it is really important to have sponsorships and partnerships um, with some of the key events like Diwali and Lunar New Year. Um, so we're very much wanting to work together with organisations and community leaders. So how did we get from there to here? Uh, as I mentioned, about three years ago, we very much took stock and said, you know, we've been really successful in many ways in the last 38 years, so what should we be doing differently? Because we know the world has absolutely changed and we need to either change or be left behind. The reason we exist hasn't changed. Um, very much that was something that we felt that our charter was now more relevant than ever before. So as, uh, as Peter mentioned earlier, we were set up when Medibank or Medicare started in this country as a government initiative to talk to people um, in their language about this important policy. So that's why we began, to talk to people in their language about the community in which they now live. And that's very much key and in fact is more relevant uh, than ever before. Our purpose, again, has not changed. Uh, it's to inspire all Australians 
uh, to explore and appreciate our multicultural uh, and diverse world and to absolutely try and, and build to a, a cohesive society. So it's not necessarily just about you know, having the Greek language program, the Italian language program. It's about actually saying that across all the languages, we need to celebrate the diversity of each other's uh, cultures. You know? And so recently with Lunar New Year, we had uh, you know, all 68 languages or so talking about Lunar New Year. And that's very, very important in terms of creating social cohesion. And our goal is absolutely to deepen uh, Australians' engagement with the content and to grow our audiences. So if we didn't have that as a goal, we, you know, there's really no reason for us to be here. So we absolutely are wanting to grow our audiences and that comes down to that content. So what was the imperative to change? Well, we found that obviously we'd been trucking along with lots of success in terms of what we've been doing and our broadcasters, and there are a number of them here today, have done an amazing job within their communities of developing relationships um, with their audiences um, and, and with the community leaders. But broader than that, the world had very much changed. So when we first started, there was newspapers, and then of course the digital age, and then more and more and more. And obviously now social media is considered um, also a legitimate media. And within all of that, of course, um, and that's obviously just 0.1% of what's really available these days. But in the middle of all that is SBS. You know, we felt, are we going to get lost in the clutter, for one? <laughs> because there are now thousands of online websites and thousands of satellite and cable services. So that was one issue, was how are we going to be distinctive? You know, we are funded by the government and we absolutely need to be relevant. So how are we going to be distinctive, distinctive in that sort of ocean of, of other opportunities? But secondly, more and more I think we felt that uh, Australian audi audiences' perspective of Australia was starting to be driven by overseas. So more and more communities come to Australia and they can sit at home now and watch cable and satellite and their view of Australia is actually determined by what they're watching overseas. And that's a real challenge for us um, and in terms of our goal and purpose, we don't really feel goes towards creating social cohesion within Australia. So from our perspective, that really gave us an imperative to change. In addition, of course, as we know, there are a gazillion devices that our audiences are choosing to use and we absolutely had to sort of step up to the mark in terms of where our, our content was. So we needed to find our point of difference, what actually makes us distinctive. We needed to refocus on the SBS charter. So a lot of the languages had a good combination of local news, international news, homeland news. But as we saw there, on the basis that there is so many other opportunities now for homeland news, we actually felt we needed to refocus on the Australian perspective. And also deepen engagement and grow our audiences, and I'll talk a bit about that. So what we did is really five points. We had a focus on the Australian information in terms of our content. And I'll go through each of these very quickly in a minute. We had to be where our audiences were taking us. We had to look at our schedule, which hadn't been reviewed for nearly 20 years. So we haven't made significant changes. And as we know, the makeup of Australia has absolutely changed. One SBS, a richer experience, I'll talk a little bit about that. And having our eye on the second and third generations, how do we keep them connected? You know, they're growing up in a culture, but they don't necessarily speak the language. So what's our plan for the second and third generations? So to the Australian Information Network. So as I mentioned, we, about three years ago, really tried to refocus on talking about the community in which people now live and through the perspective of the relevant communities. So. Yes, we absolutely cover all the news of the day, so a lot of Australian news. We also cover international and homeland, but we're really talking about now looking at it through the perspective of the Australian Vietnamese community or the Australian Greek community and making it really relevant to, to the people here so indeed they learn and understand and, and actually contribute and be a part of the community in which they now live. So. From our perspective, we see our USP, if you like. Our unique selling point is about balanced and impartial. Um, we heard earlier about the, you know, the concerns about 
Arabic media and the commercial you know, elements that might create impartiality. That wasn't what I said, but um, some, some of those issues that are absolutely real and I guess we like to try and think that we will be balanced and impartial and that is absolutely to our charter um, and provide that Australian news and information. We also provide the key settlement information to the settlement groups, uh, again, right back to our roots um, and refocusing on that um, because that's critical. And for the more established communities, um, we're working harder, I guess, in engaging them in the conversation through talkbacks and panels and interviews um, and really talking to them in their language about you know, the issues facing their communities. So you know, some people then say, well, you just like the ABC, but you're just in language um, because, as I say, we're very much focused on what's going on in Australia. And I think we're a lot more than that. And a great example I'll give you is um, recently with the plain uh, cigarette packaging story. Um, yes, of course, we had Julia Gillard and, and, and Nicola Roxon at the time, etc., talking on the radios, um, on, on the programs. But a great example I loved was in our Udu speaking program. We had an Udu speaking doctor talking about it. We had an Udu speaking tobacconist. Uh, and we also had an Udu speaking smoker who also spoke about that issue. Now that to me is unique uh, to SBS and of course multicultural media. Um, you know, that's not something that necessarily the ABC offers. So I do feel there's very much uh, a different and important role for both to play. Being where our audiences are, as I mentioned, analog, digital, online, mobile, digital TV, and also social. So we're doing a lot more around social, and that is, yes, of course, connecting with our audiences. But what we found with the journalists is that um, social is actually a fantastic way of now getting in-language talent. So on Twitter, you can search by language. So if there is um, you know, a big issue or the Christchurch earthquake or floods in Queensland, you can now search by language and work out you know, who's on uh, tweeting um, and actually jump into the stream and ask whether they also want to talk to SBS radio in language. So it's served to be a really fantastic source of content uh, and information and eyewitness accounts. So it's really been fantastic. Um, and all the languages, as I say, are continuing to engage in social. You're kidding. <laughs> okay. And um, so it's absolutely working. So calendar year, year on year, our average monthly page impressions are up 15.4%. Uh, unique browsers have jumped 29% across all the languages. And in the financial year to date so far, so the last six months or so, our unique browsers are up again 14%. And streaming requests are up 189%. And that purely comes down to the fact that we've launched apps in the last six to eight months. So again, in terms of technology and where our audiences are taking us, um, that's absolutely where they're, where they're going. The radio schedule review, as I mentioned, the first time in 20 years where we've pulled it apart. Um, it's been an 18 month process or so. We've had public consultation and we're launching on the 29th of April. Uh, in addition, we're adding six new languages. So Swahili, Tigrinya, Dinka, Malayalam, uh, Pashto and Hmong. So we've been advertising, we've had a great response. So we absolutely feel confident we'll get those programs up and running, uh, giving us 74 languages on the radio schedule and making the radio schedule absolutely reflect today's Australia. One SBS, just a quick point on that. Um, I think what we found about three years ago is that audiences more and more just see us as one SBS. You know, we're not radio, then online and television. We're one SBS. So in terms of what the radio um, division's doing is where there are big commission projects, we very much see our role is about getting our audiences to, to be a part or to watch those commission projects. But also we need to continue the conversation in language and actually deepen the engagement with that content by having talkbacks and panels, etc. So uh, we're absolutely working together, again, in terms of being relevant into the future to create one SBS and to work that way internally. Eye on the future, the second and third generations, as, as it's been touched on, very difficult to, um, to engage with them on the basis that they don't necessarily understand the language, um, but absolutely understand the culture. So we sort of toyed with offering more English language programs 
which some others have said doesn't necessarily do it for them. Or alternatively, um, we've now gone down a music path where we've started to look at creating music stations uh, for the second and third gen where the music is in language but the hosts are in English and it's very much dovetails into to social as well, obviously being the two areas. So 12 months ago, we uh, sorry, two years ago now, we launched SBS Pop Asia, which was a standalone digital kind of linear channel with music. And then we added, added other elements and um, it's been a huge success. SBS Pop Asia is the number one Asian pop network in Australia, broadcasting on digital radio, TV, online and mobile. We play the biggest hits 24-7 with a two-hour live radio show every weekday where listeners vote via the SBS Pop Asia app for their favorite tracks. Mobile is the preferred way for our audience to tune in. Over 250,000 stream requests are made to the SBS Palm Asia iPhone app every month. With over 47,000 fans on Facebook, SBS Palm Asia has one of the largest digital radio Facebook pages in Australia. Social stats don't end there. We trend nationally on Twitter during our weekly TV show. And YouTube? Yep, they're mad for it, with 950,000 views and counting. Wow, fantastic baby. Impressed yet? Well, this time last year, we entertained over 20,000 screaming fans for seven hours non-stop at Sydney's K-Pop Music Fest at ANZ Stadium. We love it! In August this year, we were swamped at the digital radio birthday celebrations at Circular Key, and we could barely hold back the crowds when K-pop band New East turned up. And finally, we've all heard of Psy, right? SBS Pop Asia was the first to play Gangnam Style on radio and TV here in Australia. SBS Pop Asia, the brand in Australia for all things Asian pop. As we like to say, we're number one for Asian pop. SBS Pop Asia so there you go, we just, uh, two years ago, um, and then just last year, we launched two more digital radio stations. Um, a really quick uh, listen. Australia's number one for Arabic pop. So at the moment, that's just a music station, but in April, we'll actually launch a live show. So we've just appointed um, a young lady to be the, the DJ of SBS Pop Araby. Uh, so the journey begins with Pop Araby. So you can listen online, on digital, uh, and on the app as well. Um, and Pop Desi. SBS Pop Desi. The new music station from SBS available on DAB Digital Radio and online. SBS Pop Desi. Playing non stop Desi Pop from the best of Bollywood to the biggest under his. Australia's number one for non stop Desi Pop. Check us out online at sbs.com.au slash pop Desi. SBS Pop Desi, number one for Desi Pop. Yes, so if you like Nova or Today FM, this is even better. <laughs> So just recapping, uh, for us, when we hit the crossroads about three years ago, it was all about re-looking at the, the content and re redefining, I guess, ourselves as an Australian information network with balanced and impartial news, absolutely going where our audiences are, uh, looking at our schedule review, which is a very big job to do, um, one SBS um, and all coming into line across the organisation and really thinking more about the second and third generations and, you know, as we know with change, the job is never done. Um, we know the future is looking bright. As we mentioned earlier, 43% now born overseas or with a, a parent who is born overseas. So we think absolutely there's a huge role for all of us to play and it's only going to continue that way. And that was what Peter mentioned earlier about Mandarin going from seventh to number one in just 15 years. So for us, we had to face the challenges. We know change is the only constant. Uh, we had to be audience driven or risk being irrelevant, embrace technology absolutely, and as a result, we're sort of heading into new dimensions for SBS radio.